Chicks and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red parts green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me as it is plain to see. I'm living. Hello and welcome back to another project. This time I'm going to be making a top, just a simple top. And this is my pattern. I'm showing you the whole thing because I haven't decided which sleeve variation I want yet. And um, if you can see on the back, one has just flared open, one is looks like elastic, one looks like it has a little tie. I'll figure that out in just a few minutes, but the fabric that I'm going to be using, well first let me see what it calls for. It calls for, ooh, this could be a problem. It calls for very drapey fabrics. It says crepe de chine, charmeuse, chalet, double georgette. All right, so throwing that out the window, I am using cotton flannel because, you know, me. And yes, it is summer, but where I live it doesn't get blazing hot. And I have found that this washes up. I've already pre-washed and pre-dried and it, it's so soft and something about breathable cotton uh, with sleeves because I can't get my arms out in the sun really badly. Um, that's actually a lot more comfortable than synthetics to me in the summertime. So, you know, plus it's a pretty darn cute little print there that just screams summertime fun to me. So I'm gonna use my cotton flannel uh, it doesn't look like it should be a problem. The, uh, the pattern's not crazy. The, I think that the extra thickness or bulk of the flannel, I don't think it's going to cause a problem. So with that, let me turn the camera down and get started. All right, so I have decided I'm going for the sleeves that are a little bit shorter and they are not closed in at the bottom. Um, I think that that would be better for me for right now. So that is the picture of that option. Let me go ahead and open the envelope and get my pieces out. Okay, so from what I can see, I haven't cut anything out yet. Just glanced at the pieces here. The sleeve, extremely wide, love that. So that's gonna be fine. I don't need to make any changes there. Um, this is a pullover top. I'm doing it out of a woven, so I wanna make sure I have enough ease to pull it over. And what I am seeing is that the size I usually cut is a 16. And based on the measurements here, um, I'll have a little bit of ease, but not a whole lot. And it says loose fitting top. So because there's not a whole lot of ease, you know, and when I say a lot, I want it to fit as loosely on me as it does on the model. You know, I don't want it to bunch up and roll up and everything. I'm going to cut out if the bodice one size larger, I think is what I'm going to do. Um, now this does have a side dart pointing to an apex that is higher than mine, so I am going to be lowering that because, you know, nobody wants darts pointing to something that's, you know, not centered. So um, let me get all of these organized and we'll come back and make this modification. I um, just recorded a whole bunch of stuff and realized I didn't have my microphone on. So let me tell you what I decided. The sleeve length of this is actually fairly long. And to me, to have something this full and this flared, um, very long is gonna be a pain because I think I'm gonna get it into everything. So I'm shortening it to be a 17 inch sleeve, which is more like a three quarter length to me. And I think that that's gonna be a lot better, you know, for not getting it in the spaghetti sauce kind of stuff. So what I've done is um, I've shortened it on their lengthen and shorten here line, which was going across. And basically I fold it at that line 
put my little ruler in there at one and a half inches because that's half of three. Fold it again and I have this little tuck that is an inch and a half deep and that's going to take the take the three inches out and now I have the sleeve length that I need. Um, I did that instead of just cutting it off the bottom because this is one sleeve piece is for all three views. So I just cut off the bottom part, which is for the other views down here. Okay. But if I ever want to do that view, all I have to do is come back in and slit the little piece of tape that's holding this tuck or is now and unfold it, add that little bit that I trimmed off and stuck in the envelope and I am ready to go. Whereas if I cut it off the bottom, um, I wouldn't be able to do that. All right, I'm getting ready to start working on my front bodice and I wanted to point one thing out. This is a very, very wide neckline. It's basically all the way over. You can kind of see you got your whole collarbone and everything exposed. It's basically just splitting perched right on top of the shoulders. So the one thing that I'm kind of concerned about is I make cutting out a larger size of the bodice you know, so I have more ease all over here, but my shoulders are not that broad. So I want to make sure that up here, I'm, I've got a neckline that's better in proportion to my actual shoulder, shoulder width. So instead of down here, I'll be cutting out the size 18 up here, just because extremely wide necklines. I don't like it where it's tempted to fall off my shoulder. I'd rather have it in an extra half of an inch. I'm actually going to go down a size. So for my side seams, I went up a side. For up here, I'm going to go down one size. So 16 here is my normal. Down here, I'm cutting it at 18. Up here, I'm cutting it at 14. And I'm just going to kind of ease that in. So start up here. I'm going to cut it at the 14 and there's a lot of gathers on this. So when I come down into this bottom area, I'm just kind of easing it between so that I'm ending up on the size 18 at this point. Okay. So the part that I cut off, is just kind of like gliding into that. There's a lot of gathers up here on the shoulder. So I don't think there's going to be any problem with making an adjustment to make this fit, but that way I don't have to worry about it falling off my shoulders. We'll see what it looks like when I'm done. Now for this bust adjustment, I need to lower this. I'm actually going to lower it. I'm going to lower it by one inch. Um, I could go an inch and a half is what I was thinking, but I'm just going to go one inch. So what I'm going to do is line up this center front fold line on one of my grid lines here and stick a couple weights on it. Just hold it down to get my ruler and a pen. And what I need to do first is um, just isolate where this is. Okay. I haven't cut my size from the side yet. That way I have room to, to move things if I need to. Okay, so first of all, up here is fine. Down here is fine. It's just this piece I'm moving. Okay, so I want to isolate that over on this side about an inch beyond it. I'm going to draw a line straight up and about an inch above it. I'm going to draw a line straight over. Okay. So let me go ahead and cut this line here and this line here. Okay, so now this is cut so that can move freely. Uh, let me stick another weight up here just to hold that in place. Okay, everything's good. So now I'm going to get my ruler. I'm just going to place it so it's about 90 degrees from this. Okay, so here's where I cut straight down. That's parallel to my center front grain line. And this top of this is, you know, a couple inches below what I need to move. I'm going to fold it straight down. Now, if I'm going to lower it by one inch, I'm going to put my ruler at half of an inch, flip this back up because a half an inch plus a half an inch is 
one inch. Okay, so now I have this, and for some reason it's not lining up perfectly straight there. That's okay, the world will not end. You put a couple little pieces of tape. Actually, I'm going to fold, adjust the fold of this little top piece so it lines up. There we go. Put a piece of tape here and over here. Now I need to get a piece of tissue paper, put it in the middle there just to fill in that gap so that everything will behave nicely. I'm just going to clip this and pop it in here. Looks good. Get a couple more pieces of tape to lock it in. And there you go. So now up here I'm cutting size 14. Down here I'm cutting size 18 because I want extra ease. And my bust placement is much more in line with reality. So now I can just come up here cut out my size 18 and we are ready to go. The back does not have this to deal with so on the back I'm going to do the same thing with the armhole guiding in a smaller size at the top to my size 18 here but we don't need to deal with that because we only have a boob on the front. So let me go ahead and cut out that back piece the same and I'll be right back. Now this sleeve is very wide so since I'm being rebellious in other ways today I have decided that to make my life easier and to save some fabric, I'm actually going to cut this on the cross grain instead of the straight. I think that's going to be fine for my chosen fabric here. So this is my fold. My selvage is right down there. I can set my sleeve right here and then put my, my facing pieces that need to be on a fold. I can put on a fold, you know. Just making it work but this is allowable if I had something that obviously had to go that direction um, I would but we make it work and since I cut my bodice pieces the tops of them at size 14 I need to make sure that I cut my facing pieces that's going to correspond to that also to size 14 up here at this top edge for both my front and back facings. Now one thing that I noticed is that there's different neck options. The one I'm doing it has like a little keyhole opening here. The other ones don't so that's the one I'm doing. I just noticed that on my print I do have an up and down. My leaves are kind of going this direction you know with this as the top. So my sleeves, the leaves will just be going off to the side. That's fine. For my bodice pieces, I'm making sure that the leaves are definitely growing up and not down. All right, so the first thing I need to do is get my dart put into my front piece here. So I am going to be doing the dart for the size that I cut the sides out of, which is the 18. So I'm going to go ahead and punch out that center dart point and the two points that correspond to it down here. Then as usual I'm grabbing a heat erasable pen and I am marking this on the wrong side of my fabric. Okay I'm just gonna color through those little circles that I just punched out. Flip it over do this on the other side also. There is a dot up here but that's at the seam allowance point of 5 8 in on each place. Each each side so I can remember that. I am going to go ahead and also clip my notches while I'm here. Just clipping in about a quarter inch. Um, yeah I think that that is good. There is going to be a keyhole opening over here but we don't actually deal with that until we're putting the facing onto it. And as usual once I get my darts uh, little circles put in I like to Get my ruler out and play connect the dots here so I have a really nice clear stitching line when I go to my sewing machine. And to make the darts what I do is put a little stick pin down the first dot, bring it back up the second dot, push that together. I'm going to pinch it up here at the very tip. Come on. Flannel wants to stick to itself here. And then that's going to give me my folded edge I need. I'm just going to stick a pin 
at the very top. Lock in this one at the bottom, stick one in the middle just for fun. Do the same thing with the other side. And then at my machine, I'm gonna start sewing it at the outside edge and come all the way to the point. And once again, we are using Yolanda today, the fabulous FAF 130. And since this flannel is pretty thick and lofty, I am going to backstitch at the points. It's very thin, I usually don't. I can just take it all the way up. Now when you backstitch, you wanna make sure that you don't add extra bulk. So I'm just gonna to come to the very edge, straighten out my fabric a little bit. So when I backstitch, I'm more backstitching into the wedge type area, just to make sure I don't add any extra bulk. And there you go. Okay, so over here at the ironing board, first thing I'm gonna do is press these darts nice and flat sets everything in plus it erases my marks. The darts are going to be pressed down so I just open this up and then press it down this way. And so the next step is to start working on this front facing but it needs to be interfaced before. Um, they actually call for interfacing for three different pieces. The front facing, the back facing, and they call for interfacing on this band. Now, that doesn't make much sense to me because this is basically a piece of two inch bias tape. When we're all done with it, they have you cut it on the bias so that it can flex. I'm assuming that's what you usually cut something on the bias for so it can flex and mold. So if you put interfacing on a bias strip, you defeat the purpose and you might as well have cut it out on the straight, in my opinion. So I am not going to be interfacing my shoulder sleeve band. And you can probably tell I didn't cut the ends off. I have it longer because I am going to be using my bias tape maker to pre-fold my strip. So I'm just setting that aside. But for each one of these, my front facing and my back facing, I'm going to cut out on a fold, one for eight, using my fusible interfacing, extremely lightweight, you know, because I don't want to add any bulk, I just want to stabilize the thread so it doesn't get out of sorts. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse this on right now to both of the facings, the front and the back. So I just put my piece wrong side up, make sure I put the little fusy dots up against that, not up because, you know, ironing those on is terrible. So this is a very, very lightweight interfacing, so I don't have to actually hold the iron on very long. I do use steam. Just let it sit there for a couple seconds, then move it on to the next space. Do the same thing. And the next space, do the same thing. Okay, once I have that set on this side, then I can come back on this side and just iron it normally, just to set everything in. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for my front facing piece now. So before I attach this, I need to finish off this bottom edge. I'm just going to run some serging straight across there. I think that will be fine. Okay, so here is my front facing. I've serged around the bottom. And on the wrong side now, I need to mark where my little eyelet's going to go. And there's a hole to punch out at the top and down here. So I folded it in half, so I have the line here where my center front is. And I'm just going to draw that so it's a little more clear here, okay? And if I line up that line I just did with my little paper, I can put some dots on either side. Okay. Now I can see up here at the top, the stitching line starts at about an eighth of an inch in. I can also see, if I can pick it up, that at the widest point there, the stitching line is three eighths of an inch or so from the center line. And that that is about half an inch above these dots. So I'm just going to put a little point out there and these dots are marking the bottom of the eyelet. So I'm just gonna kind of follow that, come around and make a teardroppy kind of shape that's gonna blend into what we have at the top. 
do the same thing here. And I think that that is close enough. Okay, so here is my top of my, my front blouse piece. Just gonna line this up on the top here. Get my pens over here and pin it. And when I stitch this, it's gonna be kind of fun to follow this stitch line. So I'm gonna come across here at 5 8 of an inch till I get to this first line. Pivot, come down and around. Come back up here at 5 8 of an inch. And you know what? I'm just gonna draw that in so I don't miss that point. Sometimes when you have to pivot, it's tricky seeing that. So I'm gonna come back up here, pivot, and head out this way at 5 8 of an inch all the way to the edge. Okay, so I gave it a quick press to erase my marks. There's my stitching line. I'm just gonna come in here and trimming it down to within about an eighth of an inch of the stitching line all the way around. This little teardroppy shape in here. And that's not all, hang on. Okay, so now down here at the bottom where the most extreme part of all this curve is, I'm going to make a couple little clips up to, but not through that stitching around the bottom here, just so it'll come open easily. And then up here at the corner, I'm cutting that in at a nice diagonal to take that bulk out, okay? Now, since my fabric is fairly thick, I'm gonna go ahead and um, grade this so the piece that has the interfacing on it, you can probably see it better this way. This is the one with the interfacing. I'm gonna trim it down to a little less than a quarter inch on both sides. So it'll look like this with the other side sticking out farther. So instead of understitching, they're gonna want us to top stitch this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the whole thing right side out. So, get my knitting needle. I have a bamboo knitting needle today to poke out my little corners up here. And um, going over to my ironing board, I'm gonna press all of this the best I can so that the edges are nice and pretty. Now, if you get to this point and you open it up and it's a little too puckered or bunchy down here, just makes, open it up again and make some more clips around that little bitty seam allowance and it'll flatten out. For me, the best way to get it so that the seam is laying where it needs to is to open it up and iron it flat first, pressing the seam allowances towards the facing, okay? So that's all pressed flat. Then just fold it in half like this and if since we're skipping under stitching that I love so much um, when you fold it in half it'll be a lot easier just to roll it slightly towards the facing so that then from the outside you don't see any stitches um, and this seam is hidden just barely on the inside like that so now that I now that I have it pressed like this what I'm going to do is come over here and on each side at about a quarter inch, just run a little short stitching just to keep this facing laying down where it's supposed to. After that, I'm gonna do some edge stitching down here all the way around the eyelet and over to this side. What I'm gonna do now is basically the same thing but on the back without the little keyhole. So I've got my back facing piece here and the first thing I need to do is I finish the bottom edge, I'm just gonna run another row of serging across the bottom. On view C, the band, the facing is on the outside. On the other two, the facing is on the inside. For the back only, for the front it is what it is. So, I guess you could probably do the other one if you wanted to, I don't think it would hurt anything. But we're gonna go with the, the plan. So what I need to do is turn up the bottom edge, the one that I just surged. I'm going to turn it up about half of an inch and press that all the way across the bottom. So with that done, now I am putting my back bodice piece wrong side up, my facing piece wrong side up, and I'm going to match it up at the top and across the top here, stitch it at 5 eighths of an inch. So with that seam in, once again, I'm going to grade down the 
seam allowance of the facing piece that has the inner facing views to it. I'm gonna, I need to get my other scissors over here. But I'm going to trim it down to about half the width that it is now, so close to about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so over here I need to press my seam allowances flat but up, up towards the facing, okay? And I will be using a lot of steam, but I don't want to steam up my camera too much. So when I turn it off, I will add more steam. But pushing the seam allowances up towards the facing, it's going to make it a lot nicer. Once I flip it down like this, it'll be a whole lot easier to get a nice curved edge up at the top here. Okay, and I want to try to roll it with my fingers so that that seam allowance is slightly towards the back. So when I look at it from the back, I don't know if you can tell, but there's just a hint of the front fabric showing because I don't want to look at the wrong side of the fabric here, you know? So now that I have it pinned, I'm going to edge stitch it across the top and across this bottom edge so it's going to be held down nicely on both sides. Okay, so I've got it top stitched along both sides here. Now before I go any further, I'm going to take both my front bodice piece and my back bodice piece and surge from the armhole down all the way around the bottom and back up to this point on um, both of them. Trying not to cut off a lot of fabric, but just overcasting the edge to keep it from fraying. Okay, so now I'm going to sew together the side seams, putting them right side together. I can't remember, did I show you my back? I think I showed you my back. It's all done there. Okay, so for both sides, I'm just going to match them up. Sew it at 5 8 of an inch and press the seam allowance open. Okay, so this is what I have so far. There's going to be a strap up here that goes across the shoulder to the back. So that's why there's nothing right here. That's where that, that bias strip that I cut, that's where this is going to be. Um, and of course we have our little opening. I'll deal with that later. What I wanted to show you is if you can see down here, we have a shirt tail hem, which comes, it's not super extreme actually, it's very slight, but it does angle up and then back down again. And they're probably going to want to narrow hem on that. And so what I'm going to do is something a little bit different um, because I'm playing with feet on my new FAF machine. And so I'm going to be using the little binder attachment and cut some bias strips that are an inch wide out of a blue fabric that I have. And before I put the sleeves on, I'm going to go ahead and bind this bottom edge with that. See how it looks? If it looks great, I'm going to do the bottom edge of the sleeves too before I construct them. I think that, that would be easier. But I wanted to show you what she looks like right now. I think it's going to be cute. So this is actually an old sheet, but I think that the color is going to match pretty good. So I'm just cutting it out. My ruler has 45 degree angle guidelines on there. So I can just line it up and trim it. Okay, I think I've got enough strips cut that will definitely go around the bottom and maybe a sleeve. What I'm going to do right now is go over to my ironing board and um, press these lightly with a little bit of starch on them just to give them a bit of crispness because I think that that helps it go through my binder a little bit easier. And before I cut out my strips, I made sure I had a square edge and I cut my strips this way. So that means I have my angles, at my edges here are 45 degrees. So I need to sew all these together so I have one big continuous strip. So I place my corners like this. Let me put a little pin. I'm going to be stitching these probably at about a quarter inch. And since I have them all sewn together now, I'm just going through and ironing all those little seams flat. Now there is, if you're going to make a bunch of bias tape, there is a better way where you basically sew together a big parallelogram kind of thing and then uh, slice that up and I used that um, one of my early videos on making a cross back apron I did that I think I did it on my walk away dress video but 
I just wanted to do a couple little quick things and I think that this will be fine. So let me take you over to the machine and we're going to play with this and see how it works. Now I need to tell you, I've never done this in a circle before. I've done it on straights, but never where I have to make a continuous loop around. So this will be a new experience. Um, this is the little attachment. It's a, a greased binder. So it's not specifically a faff thing. So I'm I'm sure everyone has one of these floating around in their drawer somewhere. Ooh, little bug. Okay. So anyway, on this one, right here imprinted, it says 15 sixteenths, which is basically an inch, just slightly smaller. That's the width that this binder will be able to use. Um, if you have one and it has a different width, that's the width that your binder will use. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to do, I think it'll be easier to feed this through before I actually have it attached to the machine. So let me find the end to one of my pieces. And I want to make sure my seam allowance is up on the inside. And you just kind of fold it and feed it through. Once I get it started here, um, let me grab a little straight pin and pull it out the bottom. So I can grab it. Okay. I'm just going to tug it through and kind of wiggle it until I can see that both ends are being folded into each other. Okay. Now that it's like that, I'm going to go ahead and attach it to my machine. Oh, and one other thing I'm going to do on my seam allowances, I'm just going to trim these corners in at a slight diagonal which will hopefully make it easier for this little thing to travel over it. Okay, this little slot here, that's where you put your fabric in. So I'm just, and I still have my presser foot up at this point, so I'm just gonna feed this in. Okay, so there you go, it's stuck in there. I'm gonna put my presser foot down now. And I've got a stitch length, oh, a decent size stitch length, just over three millimeters. On this hand, I hold this and I, I don't stretch it, but I hold it fairly taut, I guess. And then this hand, I'm going to feed the fabric through. And let me just keep on going for a little bit here. Okay, so you can see how I'm doing it. Let's take a look at it. So over on this side, that's what it looks like on the right side. That's what it looks like on the wrong side. It's just a nice, neat little quarter inch binding. And I think the color goes decently with the fabric, so that's good. I made it all the way around. I can tell you most of it went really well, but I had some spots where it was going over the seam allowance in my um, band in my bias and it just freaked out. So I have like stuff after that that I need to fix. And then it goes well again. So um, mixed reviews, mixed reviews. I think, you know, we can make it work. It is just the bottom of a blouse that I will probably have tucked in anyway. So, you know, it was a good place to try it. But anyway, where I'm having it meet, I stopped um, about an inch or so away so I can then just fold this in and just, you know, by hand fold the little bit over, overlap it. And then I can, well, I'm doing a terrible job here, but then I can just overstitch it like this, okay? Once I have it all put together nicely. Well, I just got it all pinned up and I was ready to restitch it, you know, just with the regular foot. And I have decided I'm not a fan of this down here. So, Instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is trim the whole thing off with my serger. I'm just going to run a row on my serger right here, right along it, trim all of that off. You know, my hem will only be about a quarter inch shorter than it started out. So, you know, no problem there. And uh, we'll just try something else. Well, the bottom of my hem is going to be a little different than yours because after I got it surged off, 
went downstairs, had my supper, and decided, hey, I'm going to try that one more time. Got halfway around and realizing it was doing the same pucker thing, so I trimmed that off. So it's got all kinds of stuff going on. We're just going to ignore that, and I am going to go ahead and hem the bottom of this the way the instructions actually call for. So the first thing is you run a row, I don't know why I have all that there, you run a, a row of a very long gathering type stitch at about a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, which you can see I have already done. And then after that, you're going to come back and fold up, get that out of the way, fold up your hem to about 5 8 7 inch. And for me, I'm just kind of looking at that stitching line I put in and I'm wanting that little stitching line about halfway up my little my little seam, my little hem right here. So I'm going to go ahead and press that up all the way around. And now that that is pressed up, I'm just going to go around and turn it in and the stitching line is going to be just about at the top more or less, you know, sometimes less, obviously. And the thought is, is that if you have a very curved area like this here, and you're going to need to work in some fullness or something, you can just tug on that little piece of the thread. But I can tell you that there's not a whole lot that you need to do because, like I said, the shirt tail on this is very gradual. The shirt tails where they come like down like this and over, yeah, that little gathering bit is going to come in real handy. But on this one, I don't need it. It's kind of unnecessary, I think, but you know, we're going through their steps anyway. So I'm going to finish pinning this. Once I have it pinned, I'm just going to machine stitch it down at the edge all the way around. One thing I am going to say is because I'm using my flannel, which is pretty thick, um, doing a narrow hem with that is a little bit bulky. So right here is about where the top of my narrow hem will be, okay? I'm actually going to come down, ooh, and I got those stitches there. Well, I'm, I'll clip those stitches out because I just don't need that kind of trouble in my life right now. Um, but I'm going to come up about to three quarter inch and then come down here and trim out this seam allowance just because that's going to make my little narrow hem much more narrow and much less bulky. So just ignore how messy this is because it's, you know, in the serging there and stuff. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut that out um, on both sides of both of my side seams. Okay, so I got that hemmed, you know. Looks nice. It's very decent. I will master the binder some other time, but for right now that's going to be good. Um, I've got my sleeve pieces here. I need to get started on them. So there are three dots up here on top. I'm going to punch out. What size do I have here? I have 16 size. Okay, so I'm going to punch out the dots on both sides. For the one in the middle, I'm just going to clip that because that's easier for me to see. That matches up with the uh, shoulder seam, which is actually going to be on a strap. So, you know, we'll figure that out. Clipping this notch here, single notch means front. Over here, double notch means back. So while I do that, just so I don't lose track of things. Gonna go ahead and peel back this corner. Put a letter B for back on this one and this one. So I don't lose track. Okay, um, now that I have those clipped, I'm going to mark on both sides where the side circles are. And I need to serge all the way around my sleeve pieces first. Once I have them serge, then I'm going to come back and put two rows of gathering stitches between these um, outermost circles at the top of each sleeve. Okay, so now that I have these gathering stitches in, everything is serged around the edges, I'm going to sew up this seam here and close up the sleeves. So on both sides, sewing this at 5 8 7 inch and then pressing the seam allowance open. All right, so I've got it 
pressed open and while I was over there I went ahead and pressed up my bottom edge about five eighths of an inch. Going to make another narrow hem over here and again I'm just clipping out some of this seam allowance down here so that that won't be too bulky. So since it's pressed up to five eighths here all I have to do is just kind of tuck in the bottom. Going to pin that and do an edge stitch around the very edge, folded edge here on both of my sleeves. All right, so welcome back. It is the next day here and it is time to set these sleeves in. I've actually already pinned this side on. So I'm just going to give you a quick little view. There's a little bit of ease down here at the bottom. Um, right here is where the notches are on each side. Okay, so when you pin it, you know, with the right sides together, there's going to be a little bit, at least on mine, of ease here, but not much. And down here where the seam line's going to be, it's actually pretty smooth. So that's fine. The top of the bodice, you know, as is, matches up to where the gathering thread starts, which is where that dot is. Okay, so on the front and the back, that's where that is. And I'm going to pin the other side just like this and then I'll just sew this part here, this U-shape, at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so I was going to do these a little bit differently and I had them longer earlier. I changed my mind. I'm going to go with how the instructions say to. So I've got my little strap here. Oh, I should show you. I've got my sleeve set in. At this point, they didn't tell you to trim it. They didn't tell you to notch it. They didn't tell you to reinforce it. They just said they actually said press it flat. Um, it looks like they need this to be towards the sleeve. I'm just leaving it right now because my fabric's pretty thick and the next step is I'm going to want to make sure that this is sticking out. So I think it'll be easier to leave it unironed right now. So I need to go ahead and punch out some things here or maybe not. Let me just see. It looks like there's a dot in the middle, which I'm assuming is the center top. And that is exactly in the center of this piece. So I'm actually not going to um, mark that because that'll be easy to see. I just have to make a crease. But these dots here, these are going to line up with this spot. All right. So um, I need to fold in a side and my dots are probably going to disappear. So I'm not going to mark those yet. What I'm going to do is skip ahead and fold in one side on each of these. I have two, one for each sleeve. Uh, it looks like I'm going to press it under, is it 5 eighths of an inch? Well, it doesn't say, but this is 5 eighths of an inch in, so that's what we're going to go with. What I wanted to point out is when you fold this little piece in half lengthwise, it is an inch and a quarter wide. Okay, so to make your life easier, let me show you how I'm going to press this. What I've done is fold these in half and like I showed you, but the distance between this edge and the center is an inch and a quarter. Well, an inch and a quarter is two times five eighths of an inch, you know, fun with math day. And what that means is if you fold it in half and get that crease, then all you have to do to get it exactly 5 eighths of an inch is just fold one of the sides up to match it. Okay, so that is what I am doing here. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. This is cut on the bias, so try to be careful that you don't stretch it as you're sewing all of this because it could very easily grow on you otherwise. Okay, so I just recorded this, but I have my microphone off, so I'm going to do it again. I've marked up this piece. This one I have not marked yet. Before you mark it, double check and make sure that your bias cut strip did not go grow while you were ironing it. Mine did by about an eighth of an inch or so, so I just trimmed that off. So to find the center point, I'm just going to fold this in half, get a little crease there, and where that crease is, I'm just putting a dotted line to mark my center. Now from the dot for my size here, to the outside edge is two and a quarter inches. I know because I just measured it. So then I'm just going to come up here at two and a quarter inches, draw a line on this side, and draw a line on this side. There you go. Now I'm ready to attach it onto my blouse. Okay, so I just 
put a little mark up on top where I have my little trimmed area for my center top sleeve just so I can keep that straight. So it says to pin the right side of your little band, uh, I believe on the inside of this. Am I? Am I? Yes. Okay. On the inside of my sleeve, I'm pinning the right side of my band, matching up that center part first to the wrong side of my sleeve. Okay, and I do already have those gathering stitches uh, put in here. Let me just get that out of the way for a moment. Now this point here where this line is, that is going to match up. I'm going to put it just about where this edge is here. Okay, so lining those up. I got little threads poking out everywhere where all those gathering stitches are. Okay, so here's my line there. There's the top edge of my back. I'm just going to stick a couple little pins there to hold it at the top and bottom of this little side. Now the same thing for the front. I'm going to line up this line that I drew with the top of the facing, the one with the little keyhole and everything right here. Line that up. And I'm also going to put a little pin at the bottom. I know this is very exciting. Okay, so now I need to gather. So this is what it looks like on the right side. I'm just going to grab a couple gathering stitches actually gathering my bobbin ones, which are on the bottom here. Give those a tug until this fits nice and flat. Once it does, I'll just adjust them back and forth until they're about the same on both sides. I'll do the same thing over here. I mean, I need to sew this, but I'm just going to go ahead and tie off these little gathering threads because because they are starting to annoy me by getting in the way so much. So now I have this gathered. And so what I need to do is looking at it from this way, it's going to make more sense. Um, sewing it at 5 8 of an inch. So basically I am overlapping this stitching line for a few inches on both sides. I'm going to sew it straight across here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the other side too. Okay, so I've got that stitched on here. Come on, fold for me right there. And what I'm, they're going to want you to do is fold it over like this. But I've got a lot of bulk here because, you know, I am using flannel. If you are doing a crepe de chine, you might not have the bulk I do. So I'm actually going to fold down this edge of my little bias tape there and trim out probably about half of this seam allowance down to about a quarter inch, just where all of these gathers are, because it's going to make it a lot easier to encase this. So now that that is done, I'm still working with just my seam allowance out here. Okay. Uh, and you know what else? I am going to trim off some of this in here. That and this over here too, because that just looks bulky. Okay. So yes, I've done major surgery there, but that's okay. What I need to do now is take my band and fold it over and I'm going to put the edge, the folded edge that I folded previously, level with my stitching line. Okay, I'm actually going to just go past it just enough that it's invisible, but up here where my facing is, I'm going to have it just like you can barely see my stitching line and put it just on the um, seam allowance side of that. Okay, so let me go ahead and get this pinned all the way across. Okay, so now I have it all folded under. What I'm going to do is take this, you know, again, I still have everything folded. This is my, what is this? This is my back. This is my front. This is my gathered edge of my sleeve here. I'm keeping everything folded that way and go to my sewing machine and sew right along the edge of this folded line. Okay, so now this edge here, it's unfinished, it's fine, it's cut on a bias so it's not going to fray, so I'm not worried about that. 
but hopefully you can see my stitching line is inside this row of stitching, okay, in the seam allowance area. But when I get up to this part, um, you can't see that stitching line. I don't think you can. At least you shouldn't. You shouldn't, okay? So then there's that. So let me go ahead and get all of this flipped to the right side here. The little band here is going to need to go towards the front or towards the facing, I should say. So here it's underneath and here it should be underneath. Okay, so what I decided to do after I pressed it was just at the very top edge here, I just ran a little bit of edge stitching. I already have an edge stitch going all the way across the whole facing, so adding a little bit there is not a big deal, and that's gonna hold my little bias bindings out and flat like they should be. Now, I think the last thing that the pattern wants us to do well, they want you to hem it. We've already hemmed it, so we're skipping that. But they want you to put a hook and eye right here. I am not going to. Why would I need a hook and eye there? This is plenty big to pull over my head, you know? There's absolutely no reason that I can see besides just making my life difficult. I was toying with the idea of putting a pretty little button there, but this fabric is so busy. It's got so much decoration already that I think a button would just get lost in the shuffle, you know? So what I'm gonna do is just come inside, take a few stitches just to tack it together so I just have a plain little teardrop shape there uh, with no more fuss up at top. Okay, so this is the inside here. That's where I put my stitches in. I don't want a big knot right there, so using my needle threader, I've got a thread here folded in half and I got both ends over here that I'm pulling through my needle threader at the same time there. Okay, so that is good. So just to make it so that it's nice and neat, I'm pulling it. So until I just have the loop of thread left out, pull my needle through that and it's anchored into place. And then I can just, you know, make a couple little inconspicuous stitches going back and forth here. And uh, then I can just tie it off by taking two back. What I usually do to tie off is I take two back stitches in place and then I take a third one at a 90 degree angle to it. And just wherever my thread comes up, I clip it off at that point. So here it is. Few things. First of all, I'm very glad I went up. Very glad I went up a size for the bodice because it is a fairly straight blouse. And as you can see, I've got ease, but I wanted that. I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room so it could hang nicely. Do you mind? Anyhow, I'm also very glad I went down a size for up here because I was trying to show you, I have just a standard bra on, you know, not a sports bra where it's close by, not a super wide place, just a standard bra on. And even, oh my goodness, even with bringing, making my bodice slightly smaller on the top, a size smaller, I still have a little bit of bra strap peeking through, which is not a big deal, but it just gives you an idea. If I had cut out, the next size larger, which would have expanded this by at least half of an inch, you know, I'd have even more. And I'm already at the very top of my shoulders here. So, you know, extremely wide, 
highly recommending going down a size at the very top of the bodice. You know, I like going up a size down here. Um, but other than that, I think it's a pretty fun little blouse. They never did have us trim out that seam allowance under the underarm, you know, which you normally do. I haven't done it and I was expecting it to be uncomfortable, but it's not. I think it's cut plenty low so that that's just never going to be an issue. You know, my sleeves are fairly straight. I think it's all good. I'm glad that I shortened them a little bit. This is a much more manageable length for me. If I hadn't short it, shortened them, they would have been full length and fairly wide. And for a cotton top that I'm going to be doing things in, this works for me. So, with all of that being said, hope you liked it. I like my little top, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and will the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living. My bucolic life.